Hey folks, Pierre Paul Tourjean here, Canada's Multifamily Investing Authority and former insider. As you may recall, I used to be a Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, apartment building underwriter, and I'm a successful full-time multifamily or apartment building investor myself. Welcome back to another episode of the Canadian Multifamily Investing Insider Blog. And today we're going to talk about a topic that's quite uh, popular wherever uh, all the audiences in front of which I've spoken and you know, students of mine, what are cap rates? And uh, first thing I want to tell you right up front, don't get hung up on cap rates, but you do, do need to understand how they work. So uh, this video blog post is just a quick summary of actually an article that you can download uh, on cap rates, which gives you more details and some tips. All right, but the first thing you need to know about cap rates is that it is uh, part of a valuation, the three ev evaluation approaches. There are three valuation approaches that uh, you know, lenders and appraisers use. The first one is the cost approach, right? The cost of building the asset, the apartment building, and sometimes also called the replacement cost because when you insure the property, if it were to burn down, they will use that, uh, that approach, which is the cost of rebuilding the asset if it were to be destroyed, all right? The second approach, most of you, if you already invest in small rental properties, uh, or you've had your home appraised, you would know about that. It's called the sales comparison approach. That's the approach whereby uh, an appraiser, or sometimes realtors do it as well, they take the subject property, which is the property that you're looking at purchasing, and uh, so that's called the subject property, and next to it, they present other comparable properties that have or share similar characteristics to the one that you're looking at buying, and they make price adjustments. So that's called the sales comparison approach, and you need to have recent comparable sales. They need to be recent in order to be a valid uh, you know, valuation approach. Then the one that we mostly used in apartment buildings is the income capitalization approach. That's the hill that banks and CMHC and lenders will die on. But one thing you need to keep in mind, they're called valuation approaches, not the science of valuation, all right, because there is a fair element of subjectivity in that. But the banks love the uh, you know, income capitalization approach because it's a simple mathematical formula. In this short video, I just want to give you a highlight. You can read the article, uh, which uh, you know, provides you with more details. But again, remember, there's a lot of subjectivity in the valuation approaches. So basically, the income capitalization approach uh, is it takes or converts the annual income stream that the property generates, the apartment building, as an indication of the value of the property, all right? And basically, uh, what it says is the value of a given property is the present net worth of all the net income that the property will produce for each year of its remaining useful life. And if you've watched previous videos of mine, remaining useful life, uh, I call that uh, R-E-L, remain economic life as well, for how long will the asset last, if you will, all right? So the first step in calculating the uh, cap rate, you need to determine with utmost certainty what is the NOI, since we are using the, which is the net operating income. Since we're using the income, we need to calculate the NOI, net operating income, with utmost accuracy. So basically, you need to ascertain every number in, in that. First of all, you take all the gross possible income, GPI, plus whatever ancillary income that you may have, parking, uh, laundry, etc. Then that gives you the PGI, potential gross income. Then you need to subtract bad debts and or uh, vacancies. You end up with an EGI, effective gross income. Then from the EGI, you need to subtract your operating expenses such as property taxes, repair and maintenance, insurance, property management, advertising, snow removal, and so on, all right? In my example here, we end up with an NOI of $110,000. Now we're ready, we have a reliable NOI, we've verified all the income and expenses, and we are ready to calculate uh, the, uh, the cap rate, and the formula is exactly that one. It's basically your NOI divided over market value of the asset, all right? Sometimes also called the cost, or it could be also your purchase price. Okay, now I do have an NOI, right? I've ascertained that my NOI is $110,000. For the purpose of this example, I'm assuming that the purchase price or the cost, if you will, is $1,700,000. Therefore, in order to calculate that specific property's cap rate, I take the NOI of $110,000 divided by my assumed purchase price or cost of a million seven. 
that gives me a cap rate of 6.47%. In other words, the NOI of $110,000 represents 6.47% of the capital value of $1.7 million. Now, what you need to keep in mind is that uh, this is the way we calculate that subject property's cap rate, but what you need to keep in mind is that that subject property's cap rate should be in line with recent comparable properties that have recently sold, all right? Another thing that you need to understand about cap rates also is that cap rates are also an indicator of risk, right? The higher the risk, and as you'll see in a moment, uh, the higher the risk, uh, the, the higher the loan, uh, the, sorry, the cap rate for that specific property when you calculate it, all right? Because the investor wants to be compensated for taking on a uh, higher risk, if you will. The lower the cap rate uh, for a, any given property, the lower the risk because there's a high demand for this asset. That's another indicator of demand, right? Uh, cap rates, are what we call, are being compressed when there's a high demand for this type of asset. All right, so cap rates are low. And as you'll see in a moment, I've got a great uh, slide that shows that uh, cap rates and values move in opposite ways. Uh, cap rates can also be an indicator of the property's performance. It could be condition, right? If it's in poor condition, then you can't generate the higher rents and therefore your NOI is lower, therefore, you know, uh, the value is, uh, is lower. So that's also what, but one thing, and I've loved this slide here, basically what you need to understand is cap rates and value move in the opposite direction. The higher the cap rate, if you will, the lower the value and vice versa. So that's kind of it. Lots more details. Please download the article here, PDF, what are cap rates. I'm giving you some tips on how to remember to, how to calculate cap rates. But my key advice, as I said at the beginning, do not get hung up on cap rates. Get hung up on cash flow. Make sure you got a positive cash flow that meets whatever debt uh, coverage ratio requirement from the lender and or CMHC. Make sure you verify every number. Every number must be reliable and let the numbers tell you the story. All right, not your emotions. So please keep an eye on upcoming um, new blog posts. Uh, as I mentioned previously, I've got, I'm going to be part of a big event with Grant Cardone. Uh, look him up in uh, Ontario, in Toronto on November 9th. I also have a waiting list for some of the workshops. Uh, Hamilton, the, the waiting list gets bigger and bigger every day. So please keep following these uh, you know, blog posts. I'll continue to give you amazing content. Thank you for watching. Cheers.